Today I want to just show you guys real quick a car I worked on the other week to help get spooling. Um, he's getting his car ready for the chassis dyno. He just gotten the engine up and running, had a base tune in it. And we wanted to make sure that it would spool up and you know, basically behave and be good enough to go to the track. Make sure we weren't missing something crazy with the combination converter wise or elsewhere. So we did a couple spool checks on it and just kind of roughed things in. Um, the weather was really cold, the car's not quite ready, so we didn't spend all the time to get it dialed in perfect. But what you're going to see is what it should look like and kind of where we missed it and some things that I'm going to change in the spring and try to get it perfect how we want it. So with that, we'll get right into it. So the first table we have to look at is the three-step. Um, I call it the three-step. It's an advanced table. What we do is we take the two-step or the launch rev limit and we actually add 400 RPM to it until 7 PSI. So what will happen is the rev limit will be 400 RPM higher than the two-step. And I show this all in my rev limit offsets video where I go over different ways to use them. So we've got 400 RPM added to the two-step. So in this case, I believe the two-step is 4,000 RPM. So we're adding 4,000 or 400 RPM to that. So we have a 4,400 RPM rev limit until we hit seven pounds of boost at that point it's back down to four thousand and the other table we made is a spool timing table and what we did is we did boost on the y-axis and rpm on the x-axis it's activated when trans brake is enabled and it's activated when tps is over 75 percent you don't really need the tps in there really trans brake enabled is enough since we have boost and rpm gating it um, but i like to just put it in there because it makes me feel better. You'll see that as RPM comes up, it doesn't pull any timing until we start making some boost. And as we make some boost, it'll put time, pull timing out to help it spool. Now one of the things that happens is as you pull timing, typically the engine RPM will want to fall. You're making the engine less powerful and it's fighting against the converter trying to get up to the two-step RPM. So what will happen is at 4,000 RPM, we'll start hitting the two-step and RPM won't climb anymore, actually 4,400, because we have the two-step offset in this one. So it'll come up to 4,400 right here, basically, and it'll start pulling timing. And what ends up happening is it usually drops some RPM, so it'll come down to 4,000 here, potentially, and then come down a little further. And what we do is we actually put timing back in at the lower RPM, so that if it tries to fall too low in the RPM, it puts timing back in and tries to bring the RPM back up. So what you're hoping for in a worst case scenario is it comes up, it's 4,400 RPM, starts making a little boost, and as soon as we hit 30 degrees out, it just falls on its face down to 3,500 RPM. It puts all the timing back in, well, puts 20 degrees back in, 22 degrees, and then comes back here, and it keeps going and builds boost and eventually we get up to our launch boost and it's kind of fluttering around these cells adding timing pulling timing to hold our boost and rpm steady that's how it's supposed to work let's look at the log real quick and see what it actually did all right so now i got the log pulled up we'll see how it did i've got green line is boost blue line is timing red line is rpm so as you can see he's floored it back here we can put TPS on here, but it's floored. It's 100% TPS from here all the way over to here. So you can see the RPM comes up, and we keep it with a lot of timing until it hits the two-step. Now the two-step's at 4,400, and it starts riding the two-step here. And boost starts coming up, and we yank all this timing out, and the boost just climbs right away. And we can see as boost starts to get up there, we hit 6 pounds, the RPM starts to come down and it gets down to seven pounds, 6.8 pounds, and you can see the timing starts to bounce a little here. So what we'll do, let's pull up the spool timing, and we can see that we're pulling all the timing out. It's flatlined at 30 degrees out through here, and then through here, it's starting to hover a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the table, and we'll see why it's hovering. And we can see that it looks like it's starting to fall off the RPM. So at 4,000 RPM on the two-step, as soon as it falls below 4,000, it puts timing in. 
So in our case, it's not putting the timing in and out to maintain boost, it's doing it to maintain the RPM. What we may want to do here is we may want to make this something like 3900 for the next attempt so that as the RPM drops, it doesn't pull the time, put the timing back in. That might help us make a little more boost on the next attempt. Um, for reference, we were trying to make about eight or nine pounds here and we stopped at about seven, just shy of seven. So one thing we can do is we can move that RPM like I showed in the table here, where we can make this 39 or even 3800. And that should help keep the timing out and keep it trying to spool instead of flatlining so hard. So the other thing we can do is we can look at our three-step offset table. So we can see it's 400 RPM, so we're at 4400 until here. And then as we come down, it never actually settles in on a 4000 RPM rev limit because our boost never quite hit 7 pounds. So as you recall, since we are at 6.8 pounds, we never quite hit that 7 pound limit to drop it back to 4,000. So it's hovering in between the six and seven pound area, offsetting between the two. So what we might do is we may go here and make it at six pounds so that it's already down there and it's more stable and we can just ride that timing line. Or we might go and make this 6.5. That way it's a little tighter curve, but it happens a little sooner Instead of making it six pounds, we go to six and a half. Either way it works, but we might consider dropping the RPM. First thing I would do is keep the timing out and see if that helps us get above that boost where this matters, because I'd like to see this stay at seven, and I'd like to see it make eight or nine pounds with just timing. Basically, as you're doing this, you do want to kind of balance your dome pressure with this. In this case, we could put 80 pounds of dome on the gate and it wouldn't make more than six pounds of boost until we pulled timing. Uh, that's just how this combination is. That's not to say all combinations will be that way. But because this one did not want to build any more boost than six pounds, we needed to take some drastic measures. So we added RPM and we pulled a ton of timing. And as you can see, we try to wait until we're on the two step to really get that timing all the way down there. And then once we're there, we start pulling the RPM back to try to get it to our launch RPM for the pass. And we kind of missed that a little bit on this one, but again, we were just trying to rough it in. And this was, I think, the second attempt. And for a second attempt, this was pretty darn close. And we'll just roll with that and go to the, not go to the track. In the spring, when it's track ready and the weather's coming around, we'll actually test it, dial it in then. As always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at highperfconsulting at gmail.com. Uh, drop a comment. Please like and subscribe if you like these videos. It gives me incentive to keep doing them. Other than that, have a great day.